They say money can get you out of anything. Well, in the case of these 15 rich people who turned out to be killers, all that money got them was more publicity. Oh, and sometimes a get-out-of-jail-free card. Let's take a look. Number 1. Oscar Pistorius the day of love turned into a day of death when this South African Olympic sprinter murdered his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp on Valentine's Day 2013. Oscar Pistorius was the first amputee in history to compete in track at the Olympics. Oscar was born with birth defects in his feet, and both of his feet were amputated when he was a baby. Oscar shot Riva through a bathroom door. They allegedly had an argument, causing Riva to hide in the bathroom. Oscar fired four times through the door and blamed the murder on a robbery gone wrong. BuzzSouthAfrica.com claims his net worth is as high as $5 million. Oscar got 13 years and five months for killing Riva. There was talk that in March of 2021, he would be up for parole, but so far there has been no update. Number 2. Robert Durst as the trailer for the HBO series states, a story of vast fortune and great misfortune. That's the premise for the documentary about Robert Durst, the American real estate heir. The series is called The Jinx, The Life and Deaths of Robert Durst. Durst is the prime suspect of three murders, his wife, who disappeared in 1982, then his former best friend, Susan Berman, in 2000. Berman allegedly knew details about the disappearance of Robert's late wife, and he apparently shot his elderly neighbor in self-defense and, while in a panic, dismembered the body and threw it out to sea in garbage bags. Durst was acquitted in the murder of the neighbor, has not been charged with the disappearance of his late wife, but will stand trial for the murder of Susan Berman. The new date has been set for May 17, 2021. Number 3. Harold Landry Murder, he wrote. Jessica Fletcher would have enjoyed solving this one, or perhaps a little too easy for the crime-busting female who solved crimes for over a decade. It wasn't the first time this Texan millionaire found himself behind a weapon, as reported by BBC.com. After his conviction, it was revealed he had previously been convicted of gunning down a love rival in the US. Landry received a life sentence for the murder of his wife, Lucy. Landry made his fortune by designing cranes for oil rigs and was allegedly determined that Lucy should get as little from the divorce settlement as possible. He claims she provoked him, which led to him stabbing her 23 times. The judge, Mr. Justice Foskett, told him, There is a trait within you that, if provoked and challenged, can lead to serious violence. Landry was given a life sentence. And Alexers, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channel, where each day we bring you new topics, fresh discussions, ideas, and thought-provoking conversations. Number 4. Issei Sagawa When you're wealthy, getting away with murder is rather common. Getting away with cannibalism? Well, in the case of Issei Sagawa, it seems par for the course, too. It was 1981, and Sagawa was studying at Sorbonne in Paris. He lured Dutch student René Hardevelt to his apartment under the premise of wanting to study German. He shot her, killed her, and cannibalized her. French authorities declared him to be mentally insane, and he was sent back to Japan. When back home, he found fame, which is certainly not par for the course. As reported by NewYorkPost.com, he got books, movie roles, a comic book, countless talk show appearances in his native Japan. It's believed his super wealthy father paid for the best lawyers, which is why he lived the rest of his life as a free man. Number 5. John Brooks Have you ever wondered what your life is worth in terms of dollars? Las Vegas millionaire John Brooks believes a life is worth 30 grand because that's what he paid three men who were hired to kill Jack Reed. Brooks believed that Reed had stole from him during a moving job in 2003, so a solid plan in his mind was to just kill him. ReviewJournal.com said, Brooks is the first person to be tried for capital murder in New Hampshire in 50 years and could become the first executed in the state since 1939. The last update was Brooks is serving life without parole after his conviction in 2008. Number 6. Ashton Sachs 
And the Oscar goes to Ashton Sachs, who played the part of a grieving son flawlessly. Sachs's mother owned a successful real estate company that was worth $80 million. Sachs was a depressed teenager, blamed his parents for his awful life, smoked weed and played video games. Ashton Sachs shot and killed his parents and shot two of his siblings. They survived, but one is permanently paralyzed. He pleaded guilty and is currently serving four consecutive life terms. Number 7. O.J. Simpson a man that needs little introduction is O.J. Simpson. The former NFL football star, actor, broadcaster was acquitted of murdering Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman in the 1990s. The trial was one of the most viewed and followed worldwide, with his defense team being dubbed the Dream Team. To date, O.J. has never openly admitted to the murder, although there was an interview with Fox called O.J. Simpson The Lost Confession, where he hypothetically describes how he could have pulled the murderers off. He was found not guilty of the murderers in the 90s. However, in 2008, he was found guilty of a robbery gone wrong where he was sentenced to 33 years in prison. But he's now free once again, as reported by ABCNews.com. Number 8. The Menendez Brothers these are the brothers that are believed to have inspired the Sachs murders. If your parents are murdered, it's best to not celebrate with partying, drinking, shopping, and gambling. The Menendez brothers, Lyle and Eric, fatally shot their parents on the 20th of August, 1989. They were 21 and 18 years old at the time, and after the killing, they changed their clothes, dumped the weapons, and pretended to walk in on the horrendous scene. The brothers went on to spend roughly $700 million. They eventually did confess, and over time they brought forward the argument that their father had molested them. But the court didn't buy it. The brothers are serving life in prison with no hope of parole. Number 9. Thomas Cullen Davis it's the 1970s, and this American oil heir from Fort Worth, Texas is on trial for murder. At the time of the trial, he was believed to be the wealthiest man to ever stand trial for murder in the USA. His net worth was $100 million. By today's valuation, that's like $450 million. The allegations against Davis are long. In a nutshell, he was divorcing his second wife, Priscilla Davis. During the divorce, he was accused of having his 12-year-old stepdaughter murdered, as well as his soon-to-be ex-wife's new partner. Of these murders, he was acquitted despite testimony from family friends who claimed to have seen the murderer and confirmed it was Davis. The 87-year-old man lives in Fort Worth and is said to be a born-again Christian. Number 10. Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb both came from wealthy families. The pair attended the University of Chicago and often committed small crimes, including arson. According to SmithsonianMag.com, Loeb loved to play dangerous games, and he sought always to raise the stakes. His vandalism was a source of intense exhilaration. They needed something that was going to offer them more than a few dollars and a typewriter, so they spent months plotting to kidnap a child and demand $10,000 in ransom money. May 21st, 1924, they drove past Loeb's cousin, Bobby. They lured him into the car and murdered him. They were quickly arrested, confessed to the crime, and were both sentenced to life in prison. Loeb was murdered in prison, and Leopold did 33 years and went on to live a quiet life in Puerto Rico. Number 11. Harry K. Thaw He was the son of a railroad and coal magnate, and he was a killer, too. Harry K. Thaw murdered famed architect Stanford White during a show at a rooftop theater in Madison Square Gardens, which White had designed himself. Backtrack a year. Thaw married model and chorus girl Evelyn Nesbitt. Nesbitt happened to be the former mistress of White. The public relished the high-profile murder. White earned reputation as a debauched womanizer, and Thaw came across as a spotlit playboy. Thaw tried to claim Dementia Americana, which is a phenomenon that claims American men become temporarily insane while seeking revenge for anyone they deem to have tainted their wife's virtue. Thaw was later acquitted. Number 12. John DuPont 
This American philanthropist was heir to a massive family fortune. From a natural history boffin with his own museum, DuPont found passion in sports, which overshadowed his love for nature. He managed the U.S. pentathlon team at the Montreal 1976 Olympic Games. By the 80s, his focus was wrestling. At this stage, he was a heavy drinker and cocaine user, with a temper. He also struggled with paranoia and delusions, causing his wife to leave him as she feared for her safety. Despite his erratic behavior, nobody felt threatened. DuPont unexpectedly shot and killed wrestler Dave Schultz on his property for no apparent reason. DuPont was found guilty and he died in prison in 2010 at the age of 72. Number 13. H. H. Holmes The story of H. H. Holmes seems so unrealistic it's hard to believe it's legit. Born in 1861, Herman Webster Mudgett had a fascination with death from a young age. He studied medicine and changed his name to H. H. Holmes. He bought a drugstore from a recently widowed lady, who vanished shortly thereafter. Holmes built a castle on the empty lot across from the store and would never hire a contractor to finish the project. They were employed for short periods of time, so nobody knew what the castle was all about. He would advertise for positions in the castle and would employ only women. All these women disappeared. This happened constantly. According to CrimeMuseum.org, Holmes was responsible for as many as 200 murders. He was hung in May 1896. The castle was remodeled and renamed Holmes Horror Castle, intended as a tourist attraction, but it burnt to the ground before it ever opened. Number 14. Alan Blackthorne A brutal and ugly divorce between Alan Blackthorne and Sheila Belouche took place in 1997. The couple had two children together, and the millionaire businessman wanted full custody of those children. Blackthorne made his fortune by developing a medical device that stimulates muscles. He hired hitman Jose Luis del Toro Jr. to kill his ex-wife. Sheila Belouche was murdered in front of her 23-month-old quadruplets, and when Stevie, the one daughter of Alan and Sheila, came home from school, she discovered the babies toddling around in their mother's blood and her mother's lifeless body on the floor. Blackthorne died in prison at the age of 59. At the time, he was serving two life sentences. And Aluxers, if true crime is something you're interested in, we recommend listening to American Predator, the hunt for the most meticulous serial killer of the 21st century. It's available on Audible, and if you haven't claimed your free book yet, do so by clicking on alux.com slash free book. Number 15. Marguerite Alibert, aka Princess Fami. Let's step into history as we end our video back in 1890. Marguerite Alibert grew up in poverty, but her parents were servants in an affluent area, so she knew how to blend in with the wealthy. She became a prostitute after falling pregnant at the age of 15 and was noted for her affair with Prince Edward of Wales. The French socialite caught the attention of Ali Kamel Fami Bey, an Egyptian prince, and agreed to marry him knowing of his riches. She moved to Egypt, but wasn't anticipating having to keep her face covered and be one of many wives. After convincing him to take her to the opera, she shot him dead in their hotel room. Thanks to her affair with Prince Edward, she used that as collateral and they helped to clear her name, claiming she shot the prince in self-defense. She never served any time for the murder of her husband. So Aluxers, what true crime story do you know that the murderer got their due course? We'd love to hear some more stories in the comments section. Now, you stuck with us until the end, we of course have a bonus just for you. We mentioned that money can be a get-out-of-jail-free card, which was evident in the case of Ethan Couch. Couch was driving under the influence and killed four people. His legal team's argument was that he grew up too wealthy and didn't know the difference between right and wrong. The judge sentenced Couch to a lockdown rehabilitation facility at his parents' expense and is said to have suffered from affluenza. He's made headlines again for trying to escape to Mexico, drinking and using drugs, and enjoying the occasional lap dance. He's still on probation until 2024, and everyone's just waiting for his next bout of affluenza. 
Thanks for watching, Aluxers. Please remember to like this video and subscribe for more great content every day.